little upgrade for the Savage Axis. To mount this today, you're gonna need a Wheeler fat wrench set. Come on. Okay, welcome back to Crooked Acre Statistics and Solutions. Today we got a special treat for you. I was good and Santa brought me this loophole VX3 HD three and a half to 10 by 50. Real nice piece of glass. Came with the CDSL, CDS ZL. So that is custom dial system. So there's no more dope. You just send in your info to loophole. And if you want it at 300 yards, click it up to 300. You don't gotta do any holdovers anymore. They do everything for you. ZL is the zero lock. So if you wanna go back to zero, just clicks right back in. Real nice, smooth piece of glass, quality. Little upgrade for the Savage Axis. To mount this today, you're gonna need a Wheeler fat wrench set. Some Wheeler bubble levels. The blue threaded Loctite, not the red. And uh, if you got the base model scope, on your Savage Axes like me, you're gonna need the Weaver mounting plate, some loopholed Rifleman uh, one inch scope rings. They were medium height scope rings before. I had to upgrade to high scope rings for the clearance because you don't want your uh, objective lens uh, <clears throat> touching the weapon at all. So first things first, take off the old scope plate give it a good wipe down i already did cleaned it off so now we're going to put this on here just like this line up those holes take these now get out your fat wrench set get it open. take the little or no this one is the these, I believe, the little Allen key. Good. So what I do is I put this on here, just like that. And then just a little bit of Loctite. Just a little bit. Just enough so that the recoil doesn't pop it out. What I do is I put one in. Oops. I don't torque them all the way down. So for the specs for this mounting plate, it is 15 to 18 pounds. So that's what we're gonna do. Those are the back ones, now we're gonna do number two. Now I pre-fitted these earlier. I went through it and made sure everything would work properly. And for some reason, the, the uh, screws that came with these, the ones on the front were blocking the bolt from uh, closing all the way. What the heck is going on with this? There we go. We're not going to torque these all the way down just yet. <clears throat> going over to the little screwdriver. The other two. Now these ones are a little trickier because they don't want to sit on here like that. So what we're going to do is just put a little dab in here right along the threads of it. And then quickly get this in there. This is the Wheeler Fat Wrench Set. Stands for Firearms Torque Wrench. Real handy if you're gonna be doing any type of uh, gunsmithing yourself. I don't know if this is considered gunsmithing, but whatever. A little blue Loctite in there. Drop that in there. Okay. Now it says 15 to 18 pounds. So what you do is you pull this out, 
to just above the 15. That's about, about 17 torque. And then it'll break once you get to it. Go right down the line. Once you get to 17, it'll just break. All right, we're flying. Okay. Okay. Now, give all this a little wipe off. Looks good. Looks good. All right. So, next, we're going to take the Rifleman one inch scope rings. Take these off of here. Gonna need another Allen key. So I'm just loosen these up. Pop them on. We're just gonna get a eyeball of where these will go. When you do torque these on, make sure you push them forward and then tighten them on. I don't know why, but it helps it set them into the grooves uh, more sturdier according to the more sturdier according to the uh, website loophole website right. now I don't know if that's where we're gonna leave these we're just gonna put them on there for a quick reference take out all these little screws side this chair out of the way now we're just going to place that in there just like that now what we're going to do is place this wheeler bubble level bubble bubble level on there get that level off so what we're going to do is adjust okay, great. so we changed the setup here this thing sucks and it's impossible to level so put it back on the bipod got a good level here on the base plate if you can see that right in between the lines yep and then i've got these adjusted the uh, scope rings are adjusted so that when you put these on top you're not touching the bevel where the objective lens goes from the main tube and it's not touching the uh, zoom or the uh, magnification uh, dial. So two big things not to touch. You want clearance here, clearance here. You don't want your rings to be touching anything near the objective lens or excuse me, the ocular lens or the throw lever or the bevel. The only two places it should be touching are on this ring and on this ring. If not, your shots are going to be insane all over the place. So, get that about level. Put this on here. Now, what we got to do is also, where it's at, we have to get behind the gun. Okay, this is important. With it like that, find the farthest wall away from you. And then get into a good position and make sure that there's not a giant shadow. So, that's pretty good. That's about where I shoot. So, the eye relief on this scope is about four and a half inches. Um, that's, that's a lot of eye relief. That's, that's a lot. Especially for a lightweight, high caliber rifle like this. You're not going to be getting a lot of uh, scope bite anymore if you do. So now what we're going to do is, now that we have it set to where we want it, for the eye relief on the cheek rest. Another thing is I have to get a comb riser for this 
right here it's just a sleeve with a pad underneath it to raise my cheek up because now I think it's like 1.75 inches from the bore to the center of the reticle and that's way more than it was before so now you have to raise your cheek to get a good cheek weld on the buttstock so before we do that we're going to tighten up the uh the keeper clamps they are 14 foot 14 inch pounds on here just that and just crank it until it breaks okay and you gotta check your bubble levels make sure that looks good okay now if you don't have a bipod or if you don't have a gun vise like this you can use a regular shop vise just make sure you put like a cloth around the, the uh, stock right here and uh, be careful, but you can do it that way. So now we are going to thread on the uh, keeper clamps, or not the, key, the keeper clamps, the ring top clamps right here. And loophole says 26 inch pounds to 28 inch pounds. So first things first, gotta get the correct Allen key. There it is. Same as before, we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on it. Get it on there, just a little bit. Oop, a little too much. That's all right, just dab it off. And then what we're going to do is the front to the back. Just, I like to put it in about halfway. Same thing again. Get that up. Don't want that on the table. Put a little bit on there. Just to make sure it's not going anywhere. About halfway down. Okay. Now you're going to put these on in a cross pattern when you start to torque them down. Okay. You're not just gonna go left to right and then back. You have to go in order, side to side. Okay. You're gonna do front left, back right, back left, top right. In order, slowly. That way the scope isn't biting down more on one side or the other side because nothing is machined perfectly. So the scope's not gonna be 100% perfectly Symmetrical, the scope rings aren't 100% symmetrical, so you gotta do it that way. Okay. So now that we got that on there, about halfway. So making sure that that bubble stays right in the middle of those, okay, lined up. We're gonna have to go in a cross pattern, top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right. Okay, making sure that equal spaces here, here, on the scope ring, the, the top plate to the bottom plate. Okay, we'll start with this one, do a couple turns, go down to this one, do a couple turns, go over to this one, do a couple turns, just like that, see the bubbles moving, do a couple turns on this one, just like that, bubbles moving. Okay. Oops. The 
is why it's easier to have a gun vise. Okay, I'm level again. Which one do they on that one? That's 26 pounds. That's 26 pounds. 26 pounds. And 26 pounds. Now, see both the levels, the bubbles are in between the lines. That's all we need right there. Now we have it mounted, let's talk about it a little bit. This is, uh, again, the Leupold VX3 HD 3.5 to 10 by 50. So those numbers mean uh, Leupold VX3 HD means it's the 3 to 1 ratio. They also make a VX4 HD, 4 to 1 ratio, VX5 HD, 5 to 1 ratio, and so on and so forth. I don't know how many models they make. But for each of those, they have an accolade of different kinds of specifications for objective lenses, main tubes, colors. Uh, there's limited edition stuff all over. Um, they're all super lightweight, um, very, very, very high quality glass um, for the price point. Um, you get what you pay for with these and you're not paying for a bunch of gadgets and you know, gimmicky stuff and reticles. This is a simple crosshair duplex with capped windage turrets. I mean, they're very, very positive feeling. I mean, you can feel it, you can hear it. And then the top uh, elevation turret is the CDS ZL cap. I think I talked about that earlier custom dial system I spent I sent them the specifications for uh, the 165 grain six hours I run through this gun they want a couple of questions about whatever your normal elevation is your shooting and temperature and uh, muzzle velocity and a few other little numbers they want uh, the ZL is a zero lock so you, you turn it to four for 400 yards and then whenever you're done just go back to zero, locks into place, no more knocking it around in the brush. Uh, like I said, you, you, a lot of scopes, you get a bunch of uh, options in it, uh, lots of features. This is not like that at all. And uh, they put the money into the uh, glass on this. Um, it is very durable from what I've heard. It is very lightweight and it is clear. Uh, it is clear as can be. Um, night and day difference from the uh, weaver that i had that came on this um a couple times i couldn't shoot deer over this past year for my uh the uh antlerless tags that i had because i just couldn't tell after 250 yards you know 25 minutes after uh sunset you just you can't tell so you can't shoot um so hopefully we won't be having that problem any longer with this um so I'm very excited to uh, try it. And I mean, this thing is legit. We haven't shot it yet, but just looking down range with it, uh, we're waiting for a nice calm day to zero it and uh, really see what she's got. Um, the reason I chose the three and a half to 10 by 50 over the four and a half to 16 uh, by 50 um, is because the amount of light that'll be passing through this compared to that. So uh, the rule of thumb, is generally you take the diameter of the objective lens, which is 50, and the highest magnification power, which you should be zeroing your rifles to, would be 10. So 10 divided by 50 is five. That is how many millimeters of light will be passing through your main tube, out through the ocular lens into your retina. And um, it doesn't matter how big your main tube is, that doesn't affect it at all. The only thing the size of your main tube does is affect how much windage 
elevation, or not, excuse me, not windage, but uh, elevation you have up and down. Um, so that's why I went with the three and a half to 10 by 50, just for the amount of light, um, because 10 or 50 divided by 16 is, I'm not gonna be able to do the math off the top of my head, but it is less millimeters of light going through this optic to your retina. Um, and I don't plan on shooting this more than over 300 yards, so that's why. Um, the uh, optic is a second focal plane, um, which means that the, um, the reticle doesn't change um, sizes when you increase the magnification. Uh, where on a, as on a first focal plane, the, uh, the uh, reticle will get bigger and smaller as you All zoom right, in. Alright guys, out. thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to be doing a zeroing video up next with this bad boy. Do a little uh, shooting around with it. And then uh, once we get the special CDS uh, turret, we're going to be testing that to see if it is on. One thing I don't know is if you, because for the CDSL, you just turn it to one, one MOA, and that should be 100 yards. So do I zero it at zero, or do I zero it at 100 yards, because I zero at 100 yards. So if you know, let me know in the comment section down below, down below. and uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.